KAPC-SOMTV. Go ahead on and like and share and subscribe if you haven't before. This blesses us so we can continue to bless you or be a blessing to you. We will continue uh, uh, the series that we are on right now, uh, right now currently, the importance of becoming a uh, a kingdom citizen amen and we will continue until we finish that and you'll be able to go to uh, on this tv uh youtube channel and locate all of them and you'll also be able to find us on facebook uh, uh at some point in time as, as well now last time i'm so excited we were talking about uh how isaiah 54 and uh, 52 and 14 Incidentally, we already welcome the Holy Spirit. The angels are already here to make sure there's no satanic or demonic uh, uh, interference with the word of God go coming forth on this day. And you are welcome. And thank you again for turning on, tuning in, and turning up to the kingdom frequency here where we always have a fresh revelation, fresh spiritual food for your spirit, soul, and body directly from the courtroom and throne room of heaven. I'm so excited. I never want to leave out uh, referencing the presence of the Holy Spirit of God and thanking him for the ministering angels who are here. Now, but I'm excited to get right back into this. It says now many people will be shocked uh, when they see the Lord Jesus Christ hanging on the tree. You know, I know we call it a, a cross, but it literally is a tree. Amen. That's what the Romans, uh, that was their uh, crucial way of, of, of punishing a criminal. They crucified him on a tree. Amen. It says... Uh, uh, well, let's look at the 13th, uh, the, um, let's look at the, yeah, let's look at the 13th verse. The Lord says, my servant will come to you, talking about the Lord Jesus, the, the father was speaking this to the prophet Isaiah. He said he will complete his task or his assignment. Then he will return to me and be lifted up and his name, the name of Yeshua, will be exalted above every other name. We know that the Bible says that there's no, none other name uh, uh, under heaven given among men and women whereby we must be saved because the name of Jesus is above every name in heaven, of beings in heaven, beings on the earth, and beings under the earth. Wow. And the 14th verse, which I'm uh, going to, it says many people would be shocked when they see him hanging on a tree his appearance would be so disfigured beyond that of any human being and any and his form would be marred beyond human like I mean he didn't even look like a human being now I know they beat him in the natural but that was that was not even an illustration of how he was whipped or how he would beat in the spirit realm behind the scene he took every form of a perversion every everything and I'll, I'll expound on that in my notes in a moment wow and so he he didn't even recognize a human being anymore from the inside or out. Yet the nations or the ethnic uh, or all the people of the world would marvel at him. They would be amazed. Kings and rulers would be speechless when they see him coming again, when they see him uh, uh, resurrected from the dead and when he's coming back the, the next time. They will stand in awe of him as they begin to understand what they have been told. Now, let's go on. Now, where we left off the t uh, last time, what that meant was sin did everything to him. You couldn't even recognize him. He he carried all our evil thoughts, all our broken hearts, all our sicknesses, all our diseases, all the injuries, all the wickednesses, all the evil, all the perversions, everything. He did that to restore you and I to the as fathers, sons, and daughters and back into his family as kingdom citizens and kingdom believers right here and right now. Now. The Old Testament leads up to the time when Jesus came to do that. People who do not read parts of the Old Testament, and incidentally, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed, just for your spiritual enrichment and edification. Now, people do not read parts of it because it's all about blood sacrifice of animals or bulls and goats and sheep and cattle and so on and so forth now even back in the garden of eden the first thing god did for adam and eve was to kill an animal so they could have uh 
uh, clothing made out of its bloody hide in Genesis 3 and 21. We're going to cover We're going to go there in just a moment. They had covered themselves with fig leaves, but leaves are not a good covering. Leaves do not have blood. Wow. Let's read that Genesis 3 and 21 right quick in the clear word translation. It says, God allowed them to continue to live because he had a plan to save them later. Because he, uh, uh, Adam, he told Adam to sacrifice the lamb as a token of what the salvation would cause. He helped Adam prepare the lamb, then took the skin to cover Adam and Eve's nakedness. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -mm. And I'll give you one for good measure. God then said to his son, man wanted to decide on his own or make it of his own will what is good and bad. And now he's infected with sin. So if we leave him in the garden and continue to eat from the tree of life, he will never die. And he and his sin descendants will live in sin forever. Wow. And we can't let that happen. Now, you see what that was? Let's look at the 15th verse as well. Also, I said, I will place a hatred of sin in the heart of the woman and her descendants. And this hatred of sin will find its ultimate expression in one of her offspring, talking about Jesus. Satan, like a striking serpent, will try to kill him. But as a man crushes the head of a poisonous snake with his bare heel to save his children, knowing he will die, so the Savior or the Lord Jesus will sacrifice his own life to save those uh, talking about you and I or every human being who love him and who will utterly crush the serpent's head. Wow. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. And so as we read the latter part of this, so he sent Adam and Eve out of the garden of Eden to, to work the soil. They were they would live and work until they died or their body expired. Near the garden, he also stationed a cherubim whose beams of light looked like flame and sword to make sure that no one ate of the tree of life again. And I like to say until an appointed time. Wow. So you see the importance of becoming a kingdom sin is more than just being born again. There's so much more to it. Now, uh, from that day forward, uh, people began to uh, offer living creatures or animals to God as a sacrifice for their sin. I mean, all through the Old Testament, they kept offering goats and sheep and heifers and doves and, and, and so much and more. I mean, Adam and Eve's son, Cain and Abel, uh, tried to work the sacrificial system. I mean, Cain brought an offering of vegetables uh, from his field, but Abel brought a lamb. And we, you can find that in Genesis. Genesis uh, 4, 3, and 7. In fact, we'll just go there. Genesis 4, 3, and 7. And it reads as uh, 4, 3 through 7. And it says this. As they worship week by week. Uh, well, let's go there. The first. Soon after Adam lay with his wife, uh, uh, his uh, Eve conceived and gave birth to a son they called Cain. And she said to herself, I've given birth to a man. Maybe he is the one who will break the power of sin and death. Wow. She was already thinking about the, the consequences or experiencing the consequences of their disobedience when God told him not to partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the beginning. The next child was also a boy, and they called him Abel. And gr Abel grew up to be a shepherd while Cain grew up to be a farmer. I mean, and they worship week by week. Cain brought the fruits of the field as an offering to the Lord, symbolic of his own work. Amen. And, and as a favor done to God, he thought he was doing God a favor. He refused to ask his brother for a lamb and, and mingle its blood with his offering as the Lord had told them to do. Wow. Without the, remi without the pouring out of blood, there's no remission. There's no forgiveness of sin. Abel brought a lamb to the Lord, and God accepted Abel's offering because it pointed forward to the one or the Christ who would give his life for all mankind. Abel saw the importance of obedience, so he did what God told him to do. Obedience is better than the sacrifice that you make. Wow. But Cain's offering was not acceptable to God because he did not follow God's instruction. It's important to us as kingdom believers and kingdom citizens, amen, to learn as we learn about our uh, the importance of our kingdom citizenship to be obedient to the kingdom constitution, which is the word of God. Amen. And so... Uh, 
uh, uh, not uh, to what he did. He did not follow God's instruction, believing that his willingness was all that mattered. In other words, he, again, he thought he was doing God a favor. So when Cain realized that God was not pleased with his offering, though he was his, uh, though he was with his brother. He not only became upset with God, but blamed his brother for it. And as time went on, he became more and more angry. Wrath, the spirit of the devil, rose up in him. So God said to Cain, why are you so angry? And why is your face so distorted? If you had done what you had been told, wouldn't your offering have been accepted? But if you, but if you insist on doing these things your way, you open the door for sin to control you. He said, and, and watch this. He says, and with my help, you could master that. Wow. And we know that Cain didn't listen to the wisdom or the counsel of God, but he asked his brother to meet him in the field. When they met, he turned, he turned on Abel and killed his brother. My, my, my. And so they, uh, uh, yeah, the Bible says that God was just pleased with Cain's offering. We just read that. But he received Abel's offering. does not make any sense to us unless we understand how God sees it. In his perfect system of justice, blood, amen, uh, 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 the death or the death of an animal or some compensate uh, for sin because sin is punishable by death. Cain's uh, fruits and vegetables did not have any blood on it. All he had to do was obey God, get a get a lamb for from his brother and and put the blood on it. My my my, but. Killing an innocent animal as a sacrifice is not the same as killing an innocent man. The penalty for sin on human, amen, the penalty for sin was on us as human beings. Now watch this. So God needed a sinless human sacrifice to serve as the ultimate payment for sin. Jesus was that ultimate sacrifice. And now if we accept G, what Jesus did, these words can apply to our own life. Look with me to Romans uh uh, six four through eight and it says we therefore are buried with him through baptism unto death in order that just as christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the presence of the holy spirit of the father we too uh, we too may live a new life for if we have been united or joined with him in a death like he like his we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his for we know that our old self our old man our old person our old nature was put to death or crucified on the tree with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we shall no longer be slaves to sin or the uh, and the, uh, the the senses in the body that leads us to sin because anyone who has died has been free from sin now if we die with christ we believe that we also live with him i want to read that again from uh let me see romans 6 4 through 8 let me read that from the uh clear word translations romans 6 4 through 8 and it reads as such therefore if our baptism in if by our baptism we died with christ then just as christ was raised from the dead to, uh, to the glory of God the Father, we also should live to the glory of God or the honor of God. If we die with him when we went down into the water baptism, then we were also raised with him when we came up out of the water. If our old self was crucified and died on the tree with Christ and that and the body that was once a slave, your body through the five senses was a slave to sin is dead, how can we possibly... Think of putting our bodies back into that bond of slavery. A person who has died does not uh, uh, sin anymore or practice sin, as the Bible says. He, is, he or she is free from the power or the nature of that sin. Wow. Did I say that? Let's go on. Therefore, if we have died and risen with Christ, then we should look forward to living with him. We know that Christ was raised from the dead and that he will never die again because death has no longer has any control or power over him. When Christ died, he died as a sin offering once and for all, and he now lives forever. That's how you and I as sons and daughters of God should see ourselves dead as, as far as the, being under the bondage of the control of the of sin nature or which is spiritual death which is Satan but living for God as for as far as doing right 
is concerned. So don't let the nature of the devil, sin nature, rule as kings over you, thinking that you have to do what it says to do. Don't don't give in and let the senses in your body become a tool in the hands of sin or the devil. But choose, we must choose, make a choice to serve God as men and women should who have been rescued from death and have and been given another chance. Your body or the senses of your body should uh your body should serve God by doing what is right. Sin cannot rule over us because we're we're no longer slaves to to that law, a law that that can't give us life. We we now live under the rule of God's kingdom, wow, of God's grace. Wow. Let's go on. Did you get that? Now, in other words, once he died, nobody else had to die. Amen. His, his death paid once and for all for all sin. And, and, the, and the truth of the matter, it is if he made it possible for us to be born again. Now we can live forever as, as if we never have sinned. And we can be introduced, as it were, back to our original self, who I, I call it our I am, who we were in Adam, who we all were, who every human being were in God before the foundation of the world, before the creation of the universe, or before the fall. Now, let's go on. This is what we call the salvation story. Amen. If you want to if you want to make it your own story, you need to be born again. Just as both water and blood are involved in and in, in born a natural birth, both water and blood were part of Christ's death. Let's look at John nineteen and thirty four in the Passion Translation. John 19 and 34. And we're talking about the importance of becoming a kingdom citizen and knowing everything about what a kingdom citizen is about. We've talking about, we talked about all of it, all the aspects of the kingdom citizen. Now we're going through what is what the importance of becoming one. Amen. It said, but when they came to Jesus, they realized that he had already died. Amen. And, and they, so they decided not to break his leg. Now, what 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 does this mean? The, the, and they signify every new life, uh, both water and blood. They didn't have to break his leg because he has already died. His uh, his body is already expired. Wow. So they they didn't have to do that to him because what? Because he had already died. Wow. And I'm gonna go on just a little bit further. But one of the soldiers. Uh, uh, took a spear and pierced Jesus' side, and blood and water came running out. Wow. And John, uh, I, John, do testify, or I bear witness to the certainty of what took place as I write the truth. John was standing right there when all of this happened. And he says, so that you might believe, for all the things happened to fulfill the prophecies of the scriptures of the word of God, the written word of God. Not one of his bones would be broken, and, and they will all look upon the one that they have pierced. Wow. Amen. Amen. Let's go on just a little bit further here. Now, in John, 1 John 5, 4 and 8, I want to turn to that as we, our time will wind down. Look like when you just get started, uh, time start running out, but it's because you get caught up in, the, in the, what the Holy Spirit is revealing and teaching us. 1 John 5, 4 through 8 in the Passion Translation, and it reads as such. You see, every child of God overcomes the world. Mm -mm -mm. Did I say that? Let's go on. Every child of God overcomes the world. Talk about the world system. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs or has victory over the world system. So who are the world conquerors defeating this power? Wow. Those who believe that Jesus is the son of God. Watch this. Jesus Christ is the one who was revealed as God's son, amen, by his water baptism and by the blood of, of his cross or the blood of where he died on that tree. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And the spirit of the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, confirms this testimony. 
Mm -mm -mm. Let's go on just a little bit further. So we have these three constant witnesses always giving proof or always giving evidence. There's always evidence in the courtroom or the throne room of heaven. Amen. So that the enemy or our evil one or the slanderer or the accuser, he can't go, he can't accuse us for what is uh, we have evidence. God has already pro provided the evidence through through the Son. Amen. Let's go on. So we have these three witnesses giving their evidence or their proof. Amen. In as, as it were in the courtroom. Amen. And they are what? The spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are in agreement. If we accept the testimony of men or the witness of men, how much more should we accept the more authoritative testimony of the witness of God that he has testified concerning the Son of God? Amen. And watch this. Those who believe in the Son of God have a living witness or a living testimony in their heart. That means on the inside of them. My, my, my. Did I say that? Let's go on just a little bit further. As we wind down, uh, it goes on to say, those who don't believe have made God out of a liar by not believing the testimony of the witness Amen. God has confirmed in his son through the water, the spirit, the blood and the water. Now, watch this. This is the true testimony of the true witness that God has given us eternal life. And this life has its source, amen, or origin in the son. This life. That, did you get that? Has, has, has connected us to Christ as the source of his son. It, can, it also means that God has placed us in union with his son, amen, to reveal eternal life or to show the world that he has given us eternal life. He has restored us back to his kingdom. Every human being on the planet can become a citizen of the kingdom of God and know, and know the secrets of the knowledge of the kingdom of God and how, how to lock and unlock, how to open and unlope, open, how to allow allow or permit how to forbid or not to forbid amen because that's kingdom authority and kingdom power and only the kingdom citizens can have that wow let's go on just a little bit further and so it says whatever has the son has eternal life or whoever has the son has eternal life amen and the son does not put and whoever does not have the son does not possess eternal life mm -mm -mm. now as we move on just a little bit further, you know uh, that you can't be born uh, from, you can't be born uh, for your children, and we can't be born again for them. They're going to have to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior for themselves. They're going to have to come into the kingdom for yourself. You, amen. And you can't be, uh, you can't be, uh, you cannot be born for them, and we can't be reborn for them. Or either just uh, just because the parents are in the kingdom of God does not automatically put the children in there. Did I say that? Well, a religious leader who talked with Jesus had been born into a religious community. I mean, he was in charge of the synagogue, and I'm sure he knew the books of the uh, the Torah or the law, as we call the instructions and teaching. I mean, by heart. But when he met Jesus, I call him Nicky at night. But when he when he met Jesus, he knew he needed something more you know it's not just be, uh, my mama was born again my, my father was born again and so on and so forth i'm saying that my aunt or my uncle or whoever but that doesn't make you born again you have to be born again they can't be born again for you they can't be recreated for you you must come for yourself and so in john uh three uh john three th three through ten as we move on down, John 3, 3 through 10. I'll read that in the Passion Translation. It reads as such. G uh, uh, Jesus, uh, Nic Nicodemus had came to him, Master, we, we know that you are a teacher from God, and we read this before, for no one performs the miracles and signs and wonders that you do unless God's power is with him. Jesus answered, Nicodemus, listen to the eternal truth. Before a person can perceive or discern the kingdom of God, they must first experience 
a rebirth or be born again. And Nicodemus said, born again? How can a gray head or old man, a man when he's old, be born again? How can he, he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born all over again? And Jesus said, I'm speaking of an eternal truth. Unless you are born of the water and of the spirit, you will never be able to experience or enter the kingdom of God. For the natural realm can only produce or uh, give birth to nat natural things. Amen. But the spiritual realm of the spirit, the kingdom of God gives birth to spiritual things. Why? Wow. You shouldn't. Why well, I said, he said, you shouldn't be amazed by my what I'm saying. You must all must be born again from or born of the spirit. For the spirit blows where it chooses. You can hear you can hear its sound, but you don't know where the spirit, where the wind comes from, or where it's going. So it is within the hearts or the mind of the souls of those who are born again. Then Nicodemus replied, But uh, I don't understand. What do you mean? How does this happen? And Jesus answered, Nicodemus, aren't you a respected teacher in our Israel, and yet you don't understand this revelation? I, my, my, my. And so he goes on and he told him, he, said, he told Nicodemus that the only way you can get into the kingdom, which is a country, it's a real country, it's just invisible. It's the same way that he got into the nation of Israel through birth. He got into the nation of Israel as, through natural birth, blood and water. No paperwork, no waiting. Of course, this confused Nicodemus. It did not make sense to him in, in his theological mind. And being born again today and being filled with the Spirit today doesn't make sense sense or because why people are trying to reason things out in their natural mind it's not a it's not a natural verity it's a spiritual verity it's a spiritual transaction that ha happens instantly so jesus explained to him that uh that his body was not him his spirit is the real person and i'm saying the same thing to you his body was just a house for his spirit and his soul his body has already been born now it was his time for his spirit to be born again or to enter into the kingdom and experience firstborn rights as a son or a daughter of God. Now, and just as a highly educated ruler of the Jews should already know, amen, that the best way to natural citizenship is through birth. So he should have known that the way into the entry into the supernatural or the spiritual kingdom of God is through a spiritual rebirth. My, my, my. A person can't work for the kingdom citizenship. You can't earn it. You do. You don't have a pass to pass a test or or live in a certain place for a specific le length of time. You don't have to observe rituals, keep traditions, uh, or customs of men, or follow men's rules. I mean, you cannot become a legal citizen of the kingdom because the king just likes you. You must be born again in your spirit and by the power of the Holy. Holy Spirit. We're talking about today the importance of becoming a kingdom citizen and join all the benefits and all the blessings and all the opportunities and all the privileges and all the promises and all the provision that comes with it as a son or daughter of God. It's talking about having a, a regaining kingdom or dominion or authority over everything that God created over this earth and enforcing that in your everyday life, real life situation. Isn't that good? Now, the word Jesus used is see. He said that unless Nicodemus was born again, he could not be able to see the kingdom. The, the word that means, as I said it in the, another translation, it means experience. In other words, until he was born again, he would never be able to experience the kingdom of God personally. Well, sure, you may you may be from a certain denomination and your family members were, were, were part of a particular church, but that does not put you into the kingdom of God. Wow, you have to be born again. I'm teaching kingdom, but I'm also teaching, uh, I'm preaching kingdom, but I'm also teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ and about how to enter into the kingdom. Amen. To experience it, you can't experience it unless you are born into it. Now, Jesus isn't saying that being born again is what we might call a religious experience. It's not. It's a process. It's a pathway. And uh, the truth of the matter is, it's the only time. It is the only time that that the Bible that mentioned being born again. 
most of the time he simply preaches the that the kingdom of god is here has arrived on the scene now the kingdom uh, uh, is here for your to, for your advantage for you to take advantage of for you uh, to make it available to you god has done that through the through the new birth the new birth is the avenue or the pathway to citizenship in the kingdom now nicodemus was not making fun of the idea when he asked about entering a second time and be born again into his mother's womb he was talking he was taking jesus seriously he was willingly uh he was willingly to try <laughs> amen to the impossible if only he could get into the kingdom he knew that no one would be able to tamper with the citizenship if it came through being born because spiritual birth cannot be reversed any more than a physical birth can be reversed and as jesus disciple peter wrote you, for you have been born again, not of perishable a seed, but in a incorruptible seed or imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. And as we draw on down uh, to a close, I'm going to finish up this paragraph. Uh, how would Nicodemus know he had been reborn? The same way you and I know, because we have the spirit of Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit, inside our spirit this is how we know that we live in him and he in us he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and we testify that the father has sent the son to be the savior of the world now if you acknowledge that jesus is the son of god god lives in you and and you in god well i got to quit again because i just ran out of time i will take up next time where we left out praise god for another day and privilege and opportunity to share with you the living word of God. Don't forget to, to like, share, and subscribe. This blesses us so we can continue to bless you. We love you to life, and there's nothing you can ever, never, ever, ever think of doing about it. See you real soon. Blessings.